Hello, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how we're going to calculate the uh, level of service on a freeway. As we talk about in class, um, when a highway reaches its near capacity, then it functions poorly because then we have a lot of backup. And uh, one of the things the Ashto did, they, uh, uh, this is just to give you a review before we do a problem. Uh, one of the things Ashto did, they set a base condition. And a base condition, uh, as you see, uh, it's based on uh, if we have a perfect weather and if we have our lane is 12 feet <coughs> wide or better and having a six feet shoulder and all the vehicle on the roadway should be really passenger car if we like it and no ramps within six mile and also the, um, the uh, like to see the roadway profile be less than 2% or level. But if any of these condition is uh, uh, not mad, then the highway capacity will be reduced. And uh, one of the things we're going to do in here is to uh, how to figure out to uh, uh, a level of service for a freeway. And if you look up in here, and I, we have six steps we're going to follow, and these six steps are um, um, Step one is the input data that we're going to either it's given basically or or we go out in the field and uh, get that. And step two is uh, calculate the FFS if it's not provided in step one. And then step three is select FFS curve, uh, free flow speed. And step four is adjustment demand volume. And five, estimate speed and density. And finally, step six, uh, find an LOS. So, so let's go over each one of these steps uh, one by one. And then we do a problem. And as you can see, step one is the data that are required to continue the input data. And we like to have in those input data the demand volume, number and width of the lanes, uh, right side uh, shoulder, what's the clearance on right side shoulder, the total ramp density, and also uh, what type of uh, the profile, the train, is this uh, the rolling or is it the uh, uh, level or is it mountainous? And then finally, the composition of the driver population, whether are they a commuter or they lost, they don't know where they're going. In step two, we're going to calculate FFS, and we're going to use that formula that we have. And the one thing about the formula, you have to be careful. We have to go to a table to find out FLW adjustment, that's for their lane width, and FLC, that's adjustment for the right shoulder. And once we have that, then we can go ahead and find out the total ramp density uh, based on uh, how many ramps is within a six mile uh, uh, segment of the highway. We're going to move over to step three, select the FFS curve. And uh, from there, we're going to move over to step four, adjustment demand volume. And when we do this, you have to be careful because you got to have the peak hour factor, which is given number of lane. And FP is for uh, the familiarity of the driver. If they're lost, it's going to be 0.85. If they know where they go in the commuter, we're going to use a factor of 1. And then we have at FHV. And that's really important, FHV, because we know we, in base, our base condition was talked about, we said everything be passenger car, PC. What if there's a trucks on the road and RVs on the road? So we got to go ahead and uh, make this uh, conversion, uh, make a passenger car equal, and, and we're going to do that. And then finally, we're going to go to step number five, which we're going to calculate, adjust the speed, and uh, then we calculate the density. And uh, the adjust the speed is basically, we, when we had the, um, if we look, go back, look at the um, chart, it's beyond the breaking point, and based on uh, uh, what's what we found in VP. Then we're going to calculate density, which is a VP divided by uh, uh, average uh, speed. And then once we have that, if everything is easy, we can go ahead and calculate the level of service. And we know level of service is we can use the chart or we can use a table. And for example, level of service, A is less than 11, and um, so on and so forth. And level of F, which is basically back everything up, we don't want it, it's more than 45. <coughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem right here. Uh, problem is on the board and also got it right here. The uh, V is 4,000, and that's given a pH. Yeah, this is our step one, basically. PHF is a 0.92, and uh, the uh, profile is less than 2%. Uh, lane width is 11 feet, and right shoulder is about 3 feet, and 
ram it says uh, there are uh, a two diamond uh, f uh, four diamond interchange and two different ramp um, one and a half mile apart and then the driver population is basically all commuters so or fp comes out to become one so this is step one let's move to step two step two is uh, calculating the uh, ffs which we already have it's right there and we say ffs is equal uh, uh, 75.4 minus FLW and minus FLC and minus 3.2 time uh, TRD and that by power 0.84 okay so if we go to table uh, 1.9 from uh, this is from a uh, highway capacity manual look at this table and we can see our FLW comes out to become uh, 1.9 because our lane width is 11 feet. We see it says equal, equal 11 right there. So that's where it become 1.9. So now we have that. And then a second, we're going to go ahead and figure out the uh, FLC. And if you look at FLC, and FLC comes out to 1.2 because we have... Uh, a right side shoulder is three feet and we match up with three feet and we have three lanes so when we match those two up you end up with 1.2 and the next thing we're going to calculate is we're going to go ahead and calculate the uh, ramp density and that's going to be uh, two uh, ramp within a uh, six mile and four interchange and divide that by six and it comes out 1.33 and therefore our ffs comes out to 68.2 mile now once we have that we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. And the next step is a step three, and we're going to select the FFS curve. And then from the FFS curve, when we have a 68 mile, which is almost 70, close, very close to 70 mile an hour, just before the breaking point, we come down and we're going to see about 1,200 vehicle. So we know we say, okay, the breaking point around breaking point is 1,200 vehicle. So we take that and then we're going to go ahead and move to step number four. In step number four, um, we're going to calculate uh, VP. And remember, VP in here is V divided by PHF time number of lane, time familiarity of the driver, and time the uh, factor for uh, a truck or RV equivalent. And one thing we see here, as, as we had in the beginning, the V was 4,000. And... Uh, PHF give was given at 0.92 and uh, number lane was 3 and FP was 1 because all commuter and FHB is 1 because the problem did not mention any truck traffic, percent truck traffic or percent uh, uh, RV tra uh, traffic. So we're going to use a factor of 1 and once we do that our number comes out to 1450 passenger car per hour per lane. Now this number is different than the 1200 number that we just did in previous step. Therefore we're going to go ahead and we're going to use SPP 70. If we go back to the chart that we have all those uh, equations, we're going to use the one for 70 mile an hour because that was given at the beginning of the problem. So now use 70 mile an hour and we're going to go ahead and put VP 1450 and then we had 470 is minus 1200 and our number comes out to 69.3 that's our speed that we're going to use and from there it's easy the density is equal uh, vp divided by s which is 1450 divided by 69.3 and we're going to get 20.9 passenger pc per mile per hour per lane now if we look at this and we're going to go ahead into step number six we're going to say, okay, that was 20.9, and then look at the graph here. We say, all right, it's between level B, which is at 18, and then 26, so our number of falls between there, and therefore is level C. All right. Let's do another problem. This time, the, the second problem. Let's do the second problem. This problem, uh, as we have, I, I got on the board right here, too. 
It says that the, uh, uh, the hourly volume is 3,000 vehicle per hour, and our peak hour factor is 0.85. Uh, the uh, profile is less than 2%, and lane width is 11 feet, the right shoulder is uh, 6 feet, and uh, ramp is, uh, it didn't say anything about the ramp, did it? Um, Okay, so this was the last problem. There's nothing on the ramp talking about right here. I haven't seen anything. Uh, ramp. And uh, then we have um, uh, the uh, driver familiarity is the unfamiliar driver, so it's 0.9. And percent truck is 12%. RV is about 2%. Number lane is 3. And oh yeah, they're given this uh, FFS is at 70 mile uh, per hour. So basically what we have here, in here, we go step by step. Step one is given, and step two also is given because they give us a FFS2, uh, FFS equals 70 mile an hour. So we're gonna move into the step number three. And if you go to step number three from the curve, we're gonna find out that that's gonna come out to, uh, in step three, we're gonna have um, our PCE uh, passenger vehicle comes with 1200 vehicle. It'd be uh, 1,200 uh, uh, PC per hour per lane. So for, that's from the curve. And now once we have that, then, okay, we're going to proceed to step number four. And if you look at step number four, you see the uh, formula. Let me bring it up here. There we go. And step number four gives us a VP, and that's equal... Uh, V divided by uh, PHF multiplied that by number of lane and multiplied by FP and by F for the factor of the larger vehicle. Now we have all this stuff, <clears throat> so our VP comes out to now it's 3000. And then PHF, we came out to 0.9, no, point, PHF, 0 0.85, 0 0.85, and three lane, FP was 0.9. Oh, we don't know that one, so we've got to figure out FHV. Now come back here, let's do FHV, and FHV, and that's equal one divided by one plus PT multiplied by ET, that's a PT, uh, ET minus one, and then plus PRV multiplied by ERV minus one. I believe I got that correct. Yes, so we gotta find out, we know PT is 12%, PRV is 2%, we don't know ET and ERV. So ET and ERV is calculated from a, a table. Let's go to a table uh, as seen on a, on a, on a, on a, on a screen. And our T from table 9.3, so, ET from table 9.3 comes out to uh, 1.5 and uh, and the other one comes out to 1.2 ER become 1.2 so ER is equal 1.2 and let's plug that in FHV is equal One, one plus point one two, multiplied by one point five minus one, plus point zero two, times one point two minus one. I got zero point nine four. So we go ahead and we go zero point nine four here, and that comes out to. 
1391 that's a passenger car per hour per lane so that was step four we're going to move over to step five because we got this number is different than 1200 number then we got to go to the look at the formula table and look at the sb70 so in sb70 uh, we're going to say okay sb p 70 and that comes out to the formulas on the table uh, 70 minus uh, 0 0.000 1160 multiplied by uh, VP was 1391 minus uh, 1200 and square that and I get 69.6 uh, mile per hour great that makes it easy step six is density which is equal we have uh, 1391 all right and divide that by uh, what was it 69.6 uh, .6. so we're going to come out close to 20 and then when we look at the chart it's going to be los of c Now, one of the problem we had, we did a problem in the class that they were asked, they were given us uh, the uh, level of service, but they were asking how many lanes should be there. We do the exact same calculation that have we done here, and we have to guess at the N. Once you guess at the N, and then you figure out what your level of service comes out to, if it's lower or higher, then you make adjustment, you add additional lane until you get to the number that you want.